Welcome everyone. Today we're going to learn about static electricity. And this is Paul. Paul, how does static electricity work? Well, it's an imbalance between negative and positive charges in objects. But what does this mean? You have probably experienced it yourself when you pulled off a woolen sweater and the hairs on your arms stood up. Well, that's electrostatic energy. In practice, this could be bad, like when touching electronic parts or even people. But even without a woolen sweater, there's always a chance static electricity could build up. Depending on the number of volts involved, it will be possible to feel, hear, and see this phenomenon in the form of a spark or a flash. Voltages of over 10,000 volts can easily arise in modern workplaces, and although this would pose no danger to people, it could mean the end for electronic devices. Plastics, in particular, are very susceptible to electrostatic charging due to their high surface resistance. For example, the surface potential of a normal plastic box is anywhere up to 20,000 volts, a dangerous environment for any electronic devices transported inside it. Electrostatic discharge sensitive devices are known as ESDS devices and are identified by this symbol. As miniaturization gathers pace, such devices are becoming more and more sensitive to ESD. The extremely thin conducting paths in active electronic components, like ICs, are often unable to withstand the high ESD voltages involved. Some of the damage sustained in this way is clearly visible, but some can only be seen under an electron microscope. These different types of damage are referred to as direct faults and latent faults. With a direct fault, the device is either visibly damaged or its function is impaired. Damage like this can be sustained when taking measurements, for example. However, less than 30% of all damage caused by an ESD event is direct damage. Such faults are relatively easy to identify and can be remedied at a comparatively low cost. The rate of damage due to what are known as latent or intrinsic faults is much higher. These faults cannot be detected when the devices or components are delivered, since they will still work. Only once they're operating might failures arise, which can have severe consequences. If damage within assemblies leads to production line stoppages, this can result in huge costs due to servicing or repair work. Spaces that are free of ESD provide effective protection against damage caused by electrostatic discharge. Within these electrostatic discharge protected areas, or EPAs, all necessary precautionary measures are taken to ensure that work can be carried out with electrostatic sensitive devices without the risk of damaging them. The only way to safeguard quality and the company's success in the long term is to take the professional handling of electronic devices seriously. Paul is inspecting a gas plant. With each step he takes, he becomes more and more charged due to the rubbing of his arms with his clothing. Charged Paul touches a gas tap, and he feels a spark. Paul has to repair a gas leakage. He walks through the gas plant, and with each step he takes, he becomes more and more charged. The charges are coming from his feet and from above due to the rubbing of his arms with his clothing. Charged Paul approaches the gas pipe, which has a gas leakage, and touches the pipe. Paul is heading over to a production unit. He comes in the proximity of a charged big bag, and the charges are attracted to Paul's clothing by induction. Charged Paul approaches a metal gas pipe, which has a gas leakage, and touches the pipe. Well, Paul, these examples have shown us how static electricity is created. Electrostatic energy builds up in three ways. Through the movement of a person, like the contact and separation of their shoe soles and the ground, also, through the contact of a person's clothing and their body. And lastly, by induction. For example, when a person comes into the electrical field of a charged object. And what affected the charge your body built up in these last examples? Two factors. One, the resistance of a person to the ground. The higher the resistance, the higher the charge. And two, the atmospheric humidity. The lower the relative humidity, the higher the charge. The EPA must be identified as such for all employees, so they do not inadvertently trigger ESD events on sensitive devices. 
However, when planning your EPA, we will not only focus on the necessary EPA components, but also on the best design for your workstation, in order to improve efficiency. Station, shelves, cabinets and floor must be connected from the grounding points to a suitable ground in the building. This work must be carried out by your certified electrician. But not only the workplace has to be appropriately equipped, so too do employees if they're working in an EPA. Personal ESD protective workwear has to be checked every day before entering the EPA to ensure it's working correctly. If it is, the employee may enter the EPA and start work after connecting the wrist strap to a grounding component. The electrostatic charge is slowly dissipated via the work surface and the grounding cable, so the workstation stays charge neutral. In summary, here are four tips for handling electronic devices safely. Always assume that all active components are ESD sensitive. Only touch electronic devices within ESD safe zones. Store and transport ESD sensitive devices in ESD safe containers. And Inspect your ESD protection system regularly. Paul is inspecting the plant, but this time he's wearing anti-static shoes, in addition to the anti-static workwear. When he walks, the charges created by rubbing his arms against his clothing are immediately grounded. No sparks or explosions occur when he touches a metal gas tap or pipe. Paul is heading over to the production unit, but this time he's wearing anti-static shoes in addition to the anti-static workwear. He comes in the proximity of a charged big bag, and the charges are attracted to Paul's clothing by induction. The charges immediately flow over Paul to the ground. When Paul moves away from the charged big bag, the flow of charges from the big bag to the person stop, and the remaining charges leave Paul and are grounded. Well, Paul, why do we need to be grounded? To prevent charge buildup on a person and their clothing, and to provide static charges on a person or on their clothing a path to ground to prevent shocks or explosions in the future. How can we ground ourselves? In potentially explosive atmospheres, personnel are grounded by wearing anti-static shoes in combination with anti-static garments. We hope Paul demonstrated the advantages of wearing proper protection, and from now on, we hope you'll keep it safe too. Stay safe. Stay grounded.